in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up automatic payments using Stripe and then placing a limit on those automatic payments. So for example, as you can see here on my website, I offer Zoom call logos where I will create a logo on Zoom while sharing my screen within two hours. Some of my clients may need a payment plan. So I offer right here underneath pricing $75 bi-weekly for six weeks. So they're gonna get charged $75 bi-weekly for six weeks and it costs a little bit more for this option. So if you are trying to start something like this for your business where you're able to offer payment plans without using Afterpay, Klarna, things of that sort where you have to pay them like 5%, instead you can offer your own payment plan to your clients. Before we start, I personally use Stripe. So you're gonna need a Stripe account and a Zapier account. There's multiple ways of doing this, but for this example, I'm gonna use Stripe and I'm going to use Zapier. And if you need help doing this, click on my description below and you can schedule a consult with me and I can just do it for you. But if you wanna do it on your own, I'm gonna walk you step by step by step in this video. So let's get started and don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you are enjoying it so far. First things first, you wanna open a Stripe account. When you open a Stripe account, you're then gonna make sure right where it says developers, you're gonna see test mode. Turn that test mode on just for right now. Next, you would think, let's go to subscriptions and create a subscription. Don't do that. <laughs> when you create a subscription underneath here, you're doing it one by one for each client. Instead, go to product catalog, click on add a product. And what we're gonna do is create a subscription that you would like to either have on your website to send to your clients. So let's say this is a package and you wanna break the payments down in three and then have the payments stop after three payments. So we're gonna name it basic package. Let's say what's included is a website, SEO, I don't know, and a Facebook ad. And I put it down for three months. If you want to, you're able to upload an image. It is not necessary. For the tax code, you're just gonna put down what you do. What type of service is this? Find it and click on it. Make sure it's not one off and it's reoccurring. And I'm just gonna put 1,500 for the reoccurring price. So 1,500 for three months. And I want it to come out monthly. Now you could choose daily. That would be great if it was daily, right? But it's not. <laughs> Weekly, monthly, every three months, or even custom. For but for this one, we're gonna do monthly. We want it to stop at three months. So after you add it, you're gonna see it right here. You're gonna click on it, and when we click on it, you're gonna see this here. We need to create a payment link. Why do we need to create a payment link? You can use a payment link to have on your website. So if someone clicks on get started or pay, they are directed to the link so that they're able to process their payment. Or if you send an email and say, hey, Sam, it was great talking to you. I know you're ready to get started. Please click on this link below so that we can start your three month payment plan process. So let's create a link. When you click create a link, you're then gonna choose what you would like to have as far as here. I like to have um, the client provide their phone number. I feel like that's very important. Um, I wouldn't do one for a free trial, <laughs> especially if it's a payment plan, but if you wanna do that, you can. Now you're gonna see limit the number of payments. This does not mean click type in three and it's gonna stop at three. It's very confusing, I know, but that does not mean that. This means if Sam accidentally paid, let's say he paid 1,500 and he's like, oh shoot, did I pay? Let me click on the link and pay again. You can stop it at one so he's not able to pay again. Or let's say you don't care and Sam can have, let's say he wants five websites. You can do that there's no limit. He can pay as many times as, as he wants to and do as many subscriptions as he likes, okay? Advanced option, you can do custom fields. So for example, it could be numbers, a drop down. I love this because you can put in like, what is your domain name? Um, certain drop downs and add options, have a number, things of that sort. I love it. You can add promotional codes or even allow them to put in their tax ID. Now, once you have all this done, we're gonna go to after payment. For after payment, you can either have them see a confirmation like this here, a confirmation screen saying, thanks, Sam, thank you. 
get paid, or you can redirect them to a confirmation page. So this could be a form. Once they pay, they're redirected to a form. Thank you, we received your payment. Please fill out this form below so that we can start on your website and everything else that we need. Bam. Once you're done with all that, click on create link. Now this is test mode, guys. Please know that this is test mode. Do not send this link to anyone. You will not get paid. <laughs> this is just so that you're able to set up your automations and that you're able to see what I'm doing, okay? Now guys, this is where it can be a little bit complicated, but that's why I'm here to walk you through it step by step. If you don't want to do this and you feel like it's getting like, it's a little bit too much, click on my description below and you are able to hire me to do this for you or anything technical of that. So next, we need to create a web hook. We're gonna need to create a web hook with Stripe and then we're gonna have to create your own Zapier account. So why Zapier, why Webhook? What a Webhook is gonna do is when a payment comes through your Stripe, it's then gonna send that information to Zapier and say, hey Zapier, a payment has came through onto this Stripe. Zapier is gonna read that Webhook and say, okay, how many payments has this person done? Okay, it's only been two payments. Uh, they're not there yet. Oh, it's three. Oh, it's three now, because remember the maximum is three. Now that it's three payments, I need to tell Stripe to cancel this. And the great thing about that, Zapier does more than just that there. That's just one piece. But after Zapier cancels it, Zapier can then say, okay, now that it's canceled, we can send this customer, let's say Sam, Sam an email saying, your payment is done. You can either thank them and that's it, or you can cross sell them another package that you have. Not only that, say use a project management system. Let's say for example, ClickUp. You can create a task on ClickUp for your team to look at. Let's say your sales team and say, hey, Sam, it's done with this payment. Can you give him a call? Can you email him? Can you text him and say, hey, Sam, what can we do for you? Follow up with them, do a review, something. So it keeps everything flowing, everything in motion, okay? So let's create that web hook. That's the first step. We're gonna go to developers. We're then gonna click on web hook. Click one, add an endpoint. For select events, we're gonna type in invoice paid. Invoice payment succeed, add event. Now we need to create this endpoint URL. Next, you're gonna go to zapier.com. You need Zapier in order to do this. And I love Zapier because you're not only able to do this, but our other automations that you're gonna need for your business as well. So when you sign into Zapier, you're gonna click on create. We're gonna create a new Zap. And then for the trigger, we're gonna type in webhook. Now this is premium. So remember, it's gonna be about $45 a month to use premium. The event is gonna be catch hook. Continue. Continue, and now we're testing the trigger, but we, what we're gonna need is this webhook URL. So we're gonna copy that webhook URL. We're going to go back to Stripe and paste it onto the endpoint URL. So what does this mean? Basically, Stripe is saying, hey, when an invoice payment has succeeded, a payment has been made, we are going to tell Zapier that it has been made so Zapier can do what it gotta do. Okay, so we're gonna go click on add endpoint. And so now when we click on add endpoint and we click on view logs, nothing is there. So we need to create a test payment. And we are in test mode. So we are gonna go back to product catalog, back to our basic package, view payment link, copy that payment link, paste it in a new URL, and we are going to pretend pay for this because it's in a test mode. Do not use your own credit card. So type in your own email and phone number. Stripe has a list of phone numbers, so we're just gonna use this one, and you can find this on the description as well. Make up a expiration date, make up a CVC, first and last name, and then an address. And we are gonna click subscribe. Bam, we have our confirmation 
now that we have our confirmation page, we're going to go back to Zapier and test the trigger. We should be able to see it here. Why should we be able to see it here? Because under that webhook that we made, so if we click on developers, webhook, and then click on this, it has recorded that successful payment that we just did under the logs. We're going to click on test trigger. And again, if this is getting a little bit too complex, click on my description and you can hire me to do this for you or to help you out. So when you click on test, this is the test. This is the one, the payment that we just did. You're going to see a lot of things like this. Don't freak out. I'm going to tell you which one to use. The next step that we're going to add on Zapier is we don't want this to work on any payment that you have on your Stripe. What if you have a payment for $5 and that's not a subscription? Or what if you have another subscription that's $20 a month and it's reading this? We don't want that to happen. We only want it to read the one for three months at $1,500. So you're going to see right here data, object, lines, data, description. So we are going to use this to filter out the other payments. I'm just gonna copy this, click add step, and I'm gonna type in filter. Now we're gonna click on our first field, which should be that data line here. I can remove all this. And we should see it right here. And I'm going to do contains. I'm going to remove the one and just do basic because it could be two. What if they buy three of them? And just do basic package. Make sure not to have multiple packages that have the same name. Let's see if it works. It will work. Bam. It will go through. We also want it to only go through if they have made three payments, right? We want it to stop at three payments. We don't want it to stop at one. We don't want it to stop at two. We want it to stop at three. So we're going to click on and. And back underneath our test, back underneath our test, we see the count. There's a couple that say the count there. We are going to choose this one here. Data object line data plan. It gets to three. So we're going to go here. Type in that. Exactly matches three. And bam. Continue. Will it continue now? No. Which is good. It won't continue. So now let's say it does continue. It's at three. We're going to connect our Stripe account. So underneath here, we're going to click on cancel subscription continue and then you want to connect it to your stripe account if you haven't done so click connect a new account and if you're already logged into stripe you'll see something like this if not you will see this to where you need to sign in continue the subscription id so we're going to go to custom and we're going to type in sub underscore and you should see that subscription ID right there. Continue. And let's test it to see if it's going to cancel the subscription. Now, don't panic. Because we're in test mode, you're going to receive something like this. No subscription. This. A similar object exists, which is good, in test mode. But a live mode key was used to make this request, which is fine. So we're going to skip that because we know that once it's live, it's going to find the actual subscription. Skip test. Now you can either publish it. But before publishing it, you want to change the untitled zap. So let's do basic plan three month. Stop. You can change. You can name it whatever you like there. But publish it. Or if you like, like I was telling you before, this is a little bit more advanced. I could show you how to create an email to send to your client, like cross-selling them, or even putting it into your ClickUp platform that I was telling you before. If you would like to see a video about this, please let me know. If not, you'll just click publish, and that is it. It will stop the subscription after three tries.